In this video, I will walk you through free response question number five from the 2007 AP Calculus exam. This problem involves linear approximations, related rates, and Riemann sums. The setup of this problem has a lot of words in it, so just let it wash over you as we read through it the first time. Don't worry, we will go back and pick out the parts we need for each problem as we go forward. The volume of a spherical hot air balloon expands as the air inside the balloon is heated. The radius of the balloon in feet is modeled by a twice differentiable function r of time, where t is measured in minutes. For the interval from 0 to 12, the graph of r is concave down. The table above gives selected values of the rate of change r prime of t of the radius of the balloon over the time interval from 0 to 12. The radius of the balloon is 30 feet when t equals 5. Note the volume of a sphere of radius r is given by v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Part A. Estimate the radius of the balloon when t equals 5.4 using the tangent line approximation at t equals 5. Is your estimate greater than or less than the true value? Give a reason for your answer. The key word here is tangent line. We need to find the equation of a tangent line, which we know how to do, specifically because they are asking us to estimate the radius. We need to find the equation of the tangent line for r at t. Whenever they ask me to find the equation of a tangent line, I always use point slope form, which normally I would write like this, y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. But we are not using x and y, we are using t and r. So my point slope form equation will look like this. I love to use point slope form because even the name tells me that I just need to find a point and the slope. Let's start with the point. The point will always be the point of tangency. When they say using the tangent line approximation at t equals 5, they are giving us the t coordinate of the point of tangency. So it's going to be 5 comma something. All right, remember this is t comma r. So we just need the value of the radius at time t equals 5 because that'll be like the y value. It will be the r value. And here's where we search through this paragraph looking for this information. So what is the value of r when t is equal to 5? Well, we stumble across the information right here near the end of the setup. The radius of the balloon is 30 feet when t equals 5. So the point is 5 comma 30. Next we need to find the slope. Well the slope in calculus is the derivative and we have a whole chart giving us the derivative at various values of t. Do they give us r prime at 5 which is what we need? Yes it's right here. Kabam. So guess what? That is the slope. So the slope is going to be 2.0. I'm just going to write 2. Now we can write the equation of the tangent line. Normally I say y minus y1, but we are dealing with r values instead of y values. So I will say r minus r1, which is 30, and then is equal to the slope, which is 2. And then instead of saying x minus x1, I will do t minus t1, which is 5. So this is my tangent line equation. Since we want to estimate the radius, let's get r by itself. First, I am going to distribute the 2. So I have r minus 30 is equal to 2t minus 10. Adding 30 to both sides, I get r is equal to 2t plus 
20. And remember, this is really a function of time. So let's write r at t. So this is our tangent line approximation for r at t. We want to estimate the radius of the balloon when t is equal to 5.4. So let's substitute 5.4 in for t. So r at 5.4 will be approximately equal to 2 times 5.4 plus 20. If we include the units, this is actually a valid answer for a free response question. But let's go ahead and simplify this just for fun. So the radius of the balloon at t equals 5.4 is approximately 30.8 feet. They also want us to state whether the estimate is greater or less than the true value and justify. Skimming through this paragraph, here's the key. On the interval from 0 to 12, the graph of r is concave down. If r of t is concave down, the tangent line will always be greater than or equal to r of t. The radius of the balloon is about 30.8 feet at t equals 5.4 minutes. This estimate is more than the true value because r of t is concave down on the interval from 0 to 12. Part B. Find the rate of change of the volume of the balloon with respect to time when t equals 5. Indicate the units of measure. What we have here is a related rates problem. We are given that the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's begin with that. Volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. We need to find the rate of change of volume. So we are looking for dv dt. To make dv dt appear, let's differentiate both sides of this volume equation with respect to t. So on the left side, we will just have dv dt. So far, so good. Now this 4 thirds pi is just a constant. So I'm just going to bring that down unchanged. And I will move on to r to the third power. The derivative of r to the third power will involve the chain rule. So first, I move the 3 to the front. I reduce that power by 1, so I have 3r squared. But I am differentiating with respect to t. So I have to take the derivative of this inner function, which is dr dt. What can I do now? Well, I see that we have a 3 in the denominator, a 3 in the numerator. So at least these will cancel each other out. So now we have this. I need to hunt around in that paragraph in the setup and see if I can find a value of r and a value of dr dt when t is equal to 5. Well, look right here. The radius of the balloon is 30 when t is equal to 5. So we found r. We also see that r prime is 2 when t is equal to 5. So that is dr dt. Again, when t equals 5, r equals 30, and dr dt equals 2. Let's practice our notation. If I want to evaluate the volume at t equals 5, this is how I should write it. And I'm substituting r equals 30 and dr dt equals 2 right here and right here. So the volume at t equals 5 would be 4 pi times 30 squared times 2. If we include the units, this is actually an acceptable answer for a free response question. We are talking about the change in volume with respect to time, so we get cubic feet per minute. Simplifying, we get the rate of change of the volume with respect to time when t equals 5 is 7,200 pi cubic feet per minute. Part C. 
use a right Riemann sum with the five subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate the integral from 0 to 12 of r prime of t dt. Using correct units, explain the meaning of the integral from 0 to 12 of r prime of t dt in terms of the radius of the balloon. If you need a review on Riemann sums, you can click the link that should be appearing in the upper right hand corner or you can find the link in the description. The integral of a function from 0 to 12 would be the area under the curve between 0 and 12. We will use a Riemann sum to approximate this area. A Riemann sum is the sum of shapes and a right Riemann sum will be a sum of rectangles and we will draw our rectangles so that the right side of the rectangle touches the function that we are trying to integrate. So that's why they call it a right Riemann sum because the right side of the rectangle touches the curve. Focusing on this one rectangle for a moment, we know that the area of a single rectangle is the base times the height. The base will come from the interval that we're talking about. So for example, if I'm talking about the interval from five to seven, so this would be a five and this would be a seven. In that case, the base of this rectangle would be two. So I have the area will be two times something. What about the height of the rectangle? Because the right side of the rectangle touches the curve, then the height of the rectangle will be the value of the function at the right side of the rectangle. In other words, the right side of this rectangle is seven. The height of the rectangle will be r prime at seven, which in this case would be 1.2. So the height of this rectangle would be 1.2. So the area will be two times 1.2. There are five intervals suggested by the data. We have the interval from zero to two, the interval from two to five, five to seven, seven to 11, and 11 to 12. Each one of these five intervals represents a rectangle. The base of each rectangle will be the width of each interval. So from zero to two, that's two. From two to five is three. Five to seven, that's two. Seven to 11, that's four. And 11 to 12, that is one. What about the height of each rectangle? Remember that the right side of the rectangle is touching the curve. So the height of the rectangle will be the value of the function at the right side of the rectangle. In other words, the height of the first rectangle will be the value of r prime at two, and that is four. r prime at five is 2.0, and at seven, we have 1.2. At 11, r prime is 0 0.6, and at 12, r prime is 0 0.5. So we have the base and the height of five rectangles. We need to find the area of each rectangle and add them all up, and that will be our approximation for the area under this curve, which in turn will be our approximation for this integral. So this integral will be approximately equal to the sum of the areas of these five rectangles. In other words, uh, base times height five times. So we have two times four, if we can include the units, this will be an acceptable answer for the free response question. Whenever you see the integral of a derivative, you should be thinking about the first fundamental theorem of calculus. The integral from a to b of r prime is equal to r at b minus r at a. In other words, the net change in the radius from a to b. 
In this case, we have the integral of r prime from 0 to 12. So this Riemann sum is approximating the net change in the radius from 0 minutes to 12 minutes. That means that the units should be in feet, right? The change in radius is a difference of feet. On the actual AP exam, I would leave the answer as this sum of products. Just make sure you include your units. But this does simplify down to 19.3 feet. They also want us to explain the meaning of this integral in terms of the radius of the balloon. This is the change of the radius of the balloon in feet from t equals 0 minutes to t equals 12 minutes. I want to emphasize, because they are very picky about this on the AP exam, you must include your units in your justification and summary. So make sure you say in feet and minutes. Part D, is your approximation in part C greater than or less than the actual integral from 0 to 12 of r prime of t dt? Give a reason for your answer. Here are some notes that I will erase in a moment. A right Riemann sum will give an overestimate or an underestimate depending on whether the curve is increasing or decreasing. So the question is, will r prime of t be increasing or decreasing from 0 to 12? In the setup, we were told that on the interval from 0 to 12, the graph of r is concave down. What does that mean for r prime? First semester, we learned that if f is concave up on a certain interval, then f prime is increasing. If f is concave down, f prime is decreasing. In this case, we are told that r of t is concave down from 0 to 12. That means r prime of t will be decreasing from 0 to 12. Okay, so we know that r prime of t is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 12. Does that mean a right Riemann sum will give us an overestimate or an underestimate? Look back at the picture that I drew in part C. I drew r prime of t decreasing because I knew where we were headed. Notice that the rectangle that we used to approximate is missing a little bit of area that is below the curve, but yet it's not inside of the rectangle. So the area of each rectangle will be a little bit less than the actual area under the curve. So a right Riemann sum will always give us an underestimate for a decreasing function. Let's put it all together. r prime of t is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 12 because r of t is concave down on the interval from 0 to 12. A right Riemann sum gives an underestimate when the function is decreasing. My estimate of 19.3 feet is less than the actual integral from 0 to 12 of r prime of t dt.